Today we're driving the all-new 2023 Kia Niro Hybrid. The Niro is available as a hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, and an EV. In this video though, we're just going to be focusing on this SX Touring, which is a top trim. Comes in just over $36,000, but you can get into a base model LX for just under twenty-eight dollars uh, So pretty affordable, kind of in line with the new Toyota Prius pricing. Uh, we have a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder and a 42 horsepower electric motor. Those combine to make about 139 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. That's mated to a six speed dual clutch transmission. It's an automatic. We have some really nice features in this SX Touring heated and ventilated seats, a heated steering wheel, 18 inch wheels. Uh, we'll walk you around this today. We'll show you what it looks like inside and out and talk about what it's been like to live with and drive this week. Let's start on the outside. You can already see on the inside that we have some styling and design cues that are similar to the Kia EV6, which is kind of cool. A little bit larger vehicle for the 23 model year with this redesign. We get buttresses back here between the taillights and the side streak. And you can get this option as a black piece right here, which is kind of cool. Kia likes to call everything a crossover and an SUV, but to me, this just looks like a slightly larger hatchback. Still lots of headroom in the rear, and it's a pretty good size. Hear that 1.6 liter cycling on and off. Let's show you what the trunk looks like here. Automatic lifting tailgate. Good amount of space. Sadly, we do not get a spare tire in the back of this. It looks like you might be able to fit one, but I don't know with this piece here if that would be possible. We do get a tire repair kit along with a tow hook and a few other things and some more space underneath to put stuff. You can also adjust the height of this cargo piece and lower it down one notch. But as it sits here, that's a pretty flat loading floor, which is nice. In the back seat, we have a decent amount of room. We have these kind of eco material fabric seats. The materials in here are nice enough. A lot of harder, scratchier plastics, but the cool design cues, I think, make up for some of that. And your touch points are nice. Steering wheel feels great, shifter feels really nice, turn signals, all that stuff that Kia always does a good job with. I have a decent amount of legroom back here. I'm five foot 10. I would have even more if I were sat behind my driving position. Really funky looking front seats. This is kind of a little pocket to put an iPad or a streaming device in and uh, I think that's pretty useful. USB ports on both sides, two USB-Cs, rear climate vents, lots of headroom in this Kia Niro. There's a little bump out in the roof. Nice looking sunroof too. Yeah, nice, spacious, usable interior. Let's pop the hood, take a look at this hybrid powertrain. I believe this 1.6 liter makes 104 horsepower and the electric motor makes about 42 horsepower. Somehow that combines to 139 horsepower rating. A little bit of loss in there somewhere. But this is rated to get about 45 miles to the gallon on the highway and 53 MPG in the city. This week in the colder temperatures, I've seen about 37 miles to the gallon uh, in some combined driving. Shorter trips, but still, definitely a lot lower than the projected EPA ratings. All right, let's hop inside, take a look around here. We get a Harman Kardon sound system, kind of a smaller door pocket area to put a smaller water bottle. Auto up down windows up front two seat memory settings. You've got adjustments over here to the left for your screen brightness. You can pop the tailgate, turn off traction control. You've got a drive mode button right here on the steering wheel. Only two drive modes, sport and eco. I kind of wish there was something in between. 
Eco's a little bit conservative with its acceleration off the line, and Sport's a little bit too exuberant. Uh, a normal drive mode would kind of be a sweet spot, but for the most part, I've been driving this in Eco all week, and you get used to it, it's fine. It's a very smooth vehicle to drive. Pretty familiar looking infotainment and arrangement here in the center stack. We get this dual screen layout here that's switchable between climate controls and all of your multimedia controls. Not crazy about it still. I love consistent, constant buttons and switch gear in interiors. And sometimes I'll reach for this and I'm like, oh, I'm on the wrong screen. I'll have to press it, kind of reset my brain. It's a little bit more distracting than I would like on the road in the real world. Mostly I've just been leaving it on the climate control settings. Infotainment is pretty similar to what we see in a lot of other Kia models. Wired CarPlay and Android Auto. Reverse camera looks pretty nice. No 360 cam, but we do get parking sensors all the way around. Lots of piano black plastic that's already pretty scratched up. Not the best look. We do get a lot of room down here to put our phone. We've got wireless charging up there. And these cup holders are so cool. Look at that. <laughs> you can either turn them into a cup holder or just have a space to put larger items down here, as well as larger water bottles, which is really nice. A little bit more storage in there. Here's the glove box. Some ambient lighting right here, which you'll probably see in the dark, but not much during the daytime. There's your sunroof. Again, more eco-feeling materials up top here. Pretty straightforward interior. We get paddle shifters behind the wheel that will control our level of regenerative braking. We'll talk a little bit more about that once we get on the road. This is what our gauge cluster looks like. It changes depending on drive mode. And that's about it. You just get these digital readouts. You have a couple different settings here. This has a green zone mode where it will go through school zones or neighborhoods or frequented areas and prioritize electric driving, which is kind of cool. It'll give you a little bit more power in those zones so you can accelerate normally and uh, turn off the gasoline engine. That's meant to kind of uh, improve the air quality for children and sensitive groups and your neighbors, which is kind of nice, neat feature, something I haven't seen in a hybrid before. And this has a, actually a decent amount of acceleration in EV mode. All right, I think that pretty much covers a basic walk around of this car. Let's go and uh, let's take this for a drive. Here's what our key fob looks like. Same detonator style that we saw first with the Kia Stinger. This is front wheel drive only compared to the Prius, which is available in all wheel drive. So, setting off, very lightweight controls, light throttle, light brake, light steering, very smooth shifts between gears. You can feel them, but they're nicely blended. And the transition from electric to gasoline power is almost unnoticeable. All you hear is the engine start to kind of growl away a little bit. Kia did a really good job blending that transition in this car, very smooth. Not a ton of power here, but there's enough, I think. Sixty miles per hour happens in about nine seconds or so, maybe a little bit less. A little bit more road noise, NVH than I would prefer. It feels about like kind of a more economy-oriented hatchback. Ride quality is nice though, even over these really rough potholes. This Nero also comes on 16 inch wheels instead of the 18s on this SX Touring. That's probably what I would opt for for our rough Michigan roads. Let's put sport mode on here. Got kind of greasy conditions out today, so we're not going to push this around too many corners, but handling is fine for something like this. Pretty average for a vehicle in this class. Let's 
by no means sporty or really exciting to drive. The new Prius blows this out of the water in terms of quality, driving dynamics, performance. But the new Prius is also going to be pretty hard to get a hold of. We have really simple, nice, easy to use cruise control buttons here on the steering wheel. Easy to change distance control, lane centering, clear gauge graphics that show us what's going on. Besides a little bit of wind noise, this is a pretty comfortable vehicle to cruise in. Visibility is excellent. These seats are very comfortable. As we're coming down from speed, let's show you what regenerative braking looks like. You have three different levels. Level one, level two, level three, and if you hold the left paddle, max. I'm not a huge fan of the higher levels of regen just because this regenerative braking system is kind of an on-off switch. There's no way to kind of blend between full regen and light regen with the throttle pedal. So I've been just leaving it on level one. I would like Kia to improve that just a little bit, kind of smooth out that regenerative braking system. You can also switch it to an auto regen system that will kind of predict how much regenerative braking it needs according to the speed of traffic ahead of you. So it's a little bit Takes that, that takes a little bit of getting used to, uh, something that's kind of down to personal preference. That's easy to switch. All you have to do to change that is just hold that right paddle and it'll say auto, which is kind of cool. Also, whatever level of regenerative braking you're on, you can hold that left paddle for max regen and come down from speed. It brings you down relatively quickly. Let's see if we can get this to go into electric driving mode here. Yeah, it cruises along nicely. In EV mode, you can see there's a little power meter here showing you where you are with your accelerator and engine kicks on, you barely even notice. The only thing you notice is the uptick of numbers on the display. Good amount of power off the line. I will say there is a nice amount of torque fill from this electric motor. It kind of gives you a bit more response out of this powertrain. It's still not fast. This is a pretty sluggish car comparatively to the Prius and to a lot of other modern vehicles out there. So right now we're passing by a college. It says green right here in the gauge display, kind of noting, uh, telling us that this is a green zone. So we're getting a little bit more acceleration in EV mode, depending on our battery level. It'll prioritize EV driving. And while we're just cruising around here, let's go in and test out this Harman Kardon sound system. We get a volume knob, but only if you're on the right screen. Otherwise, you have to use the steering wheel. Oh, and it's on this side. <laughs> Keep pressing the cruise control button.
right, so some final thoughts on the Kia Niro Hybrid. As it stands, this is a pretty nice vehicle to drive. It falls quite a bit short of the competition, which is the Prius, but the new Prius is just one of the best vehicles I've driven all year, and that's gonna be a hard uh, mark to meet. That said though, it drives well enough for what it is. I like the fact that instead of a CVT, you get a six-speed dual clutch. I will say this is a much nicer vehicle to drive than the previous generation Kia Niro. I think it looks a little bit better too. Um, it's just a bit more refined at the package. The drivetrain is really smooth. Could do with a little bit more quietness and better interior materials. But overall, this is a pretty good car. I will reserve judgment on comparing it to the plug-in hybrid and EV options. You're gonna save a little bit of money with the standard hybrid Nero, but uh, yeah, curious to drive one of those other versions at a future date. Until then though, those are gonna be my thoughts on the 2023 Kia Nero Hybrid. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.